Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Well, we're back. Hope you enjoyed those two weeks of solid Bumblecast. That's it, man. It just... So much Bumblecast. Way, way too much bumbling going on around here. Ah, but it's exciting to be successful, and that's entirely thanks to our patrons over patreon.com slash bumblecast ko-fi.com slash bumblecast and our youtube members yes indeed it is and that's who this episode is dedicated to but first we got a little bit of an announcement to make oh my goodness yes we have officially launched the bumble ko-fi shop if you head on over to our ko-fi that's ko-fi.com slash bumblecast slash shop you can head on over there and pick up uh only one item in the shop so far (laughs) <laughs> but it is a very, very nice item in the form of some custom uh, Bumblecast Bumble Dice. You can get a pair of D6s with the Bumblecast logo on them, and uh, they look fantastic. I can say that because I am the one handling all the shipping, and I have them right here, and they all... here. Here's the sound of them. There they are. You can hear them. They're here, and uh, I have them, and... Uh, I'm going to be shipping them out as orders come in. So it's exciting. They are very, very uh, beautiful dice. They look wonderful. So for uh, $10, you can pick up a pair of D6s with the Bumblecast logo engraved on the uh, six side. So when you roll that maximum roll, you know Bumblecast. So if you want your chance to Bumblecast your own Bumble Dice, head over to Kofi.com slash Bumblecast slash shop. Nice. Yes. Check it out. And uh, hopefully the folks who have bought it so far enjoy. I've already shipped out those orders and everything. So, bam. All right. Let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A this week. But uh, we're bringing back a feature that uh, has been missing for a while. It's time for Kyle's question. Are we really starting September off this way, Kyle? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, technically we started it off with the Starline show, but... Uh... Oh, that's right. Let's continue our downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you said it, not me, I guess. <laughs> All right. Here's a question from me. Is Sonic's character in IDW actually Sega's current standard for how they want him to be portrayed? Or is it just your interpretation of how you think Sega wants him to be portrayed? If it's the former, does this come from Sega of America or Sega of Japan? Uh, I'm going to make this more complicated than it needs to be, than I probably should. But first and foremost, this comes from Sega. That's america and japan it gets approved by both branches everything we publish goes through them everything character designs scripts the whole shebang they approve it all um to get more esoteric any writer is going to have their approach to the material the way i interpret the guidelines is going to be different from the way evan interprets the guidelines or how danny interprets the guidelines or how anyone else has over the years no one has an identical vision of somebody else's property that's just the that's human nature so you know there will be different flavors between writers and that's just how it is and you may not agree with a individual's approach you may not agree with what the basis is but that's just how it goes all righty uh, i mean i guess that makes about as much sense as anything so it is both how they want him to be portrayed and your interpretation of the character i mean you could give something like that sega could give us the exact same prompt right you know word for word and i guarantee you i'm going to come up with something different from evan Right. And neither one is right or wrong. It's just different writers approach things in different ways. Right. And as long as it, you know, is, is uh, approved by our friends over at SOA and SOJ, then we're on track. Alrighty. Here's a question from Alphamon or Yukin. Why doesn't Bunny or any roboticized individual who desires to look more quote unquote normal for that matter simply have their robot parts replaced? with modified parts from the infiltrator bots slash auto automatons. 
why doesn't Bunny seek out incredibly rare black market weaponry and graft it onto her body? Why not? No. <laughs> Number one, you'd have to find an auto automa- automation, auto automa- a double A that you know looks the way you want to look. And then you have to assume that its components are compatible with roboticized bodies. And then in the case of fully roboticized folks, they would have to be they have their consciousnesses transferred over, which raises a whole lot of questions about identity and self. And then once the BIM came through and de-roboticized everything, what would happen to the former Robians? Would they just be empty, fleshy husks? Like the, the double A's, they didn't get turned into flesh and blood. So you'd be stuck in a robot body. They may not even look like the one you want. I thought, I, I figured Bunny would need more than double A's to power her, but hmm, what do I know? <laughs> Andrew D has a question. When do all the stories in the Sonic 2022 annual take place? I don't know. Not to the degree that you want, I'm sure. I can't place them on a definitive timeline. They they take place where they make sense. Here's a question from Arc Fighter. It's the ultimate team race time. Team Mean Greens, comprised of Jet, Surge, and everyone's favorite robot from another dimension, Johnny. They'll be up against the boys who are blue, Metal, Sonic, and Kit Tsunami? Given the caveat that Surge can't just order Kit to lose, how does the race go? How hilariously awkward is the two teams teamwork? And who pulls out the final victory? I don't know if those teams could work. <laughs> They would like play. they would I, not come I together. I could almost see Surge being baited into ordering Kit to run a clean race just to rub it in Sonic's face when he loses. And I could see Eggman ordering Metal Sonic to run a clean race just for the virtue of the bragging rights. But Team Green, Mm-mm. there's nothing going to keep those three from running each other over willfully repeatedly gleefully i think that's part of the fun (laughs) i mean i i think team blue would win just by virtue of sonic and metal being able to focus on the race and finishing it kit would be distracted by surge taking hit from anybody else and surge and jet and johnny would just be falling falling over each other trying to outrace each other i don't think they could gel as a team at all no probably not probably not Um, if there was like some kind of hardcore extenuating circumstances even then it would be more like they're just not actively getting in each other's way (laughs) but they would still manage it passively oh of course of course i I mean this is this is just asking for trouble Mm -hmm. but that's what makes it fun here's a question from oz jam How do you decide names for your characters? With Sonic, it seems a little easier, due to most of the names being a connection to their powers, Amy aside. But when it comes to the other series, how do you decide the names of characters and in relation to side characters that come from different countries when the setting is based on real life? Ah, hmm. Are you telling me Amy's power is not (laughs) Rose-ing? Amy Hammer. Hmm. (laughs) Hammer Rose. Yes. Hmm. No. Mm. Uh, it's, it all comes down to what do you want from the character? Um, I tend to get a little too nerdy in the weeds and look up, you know, the history of the name and the meaning of the names and get caught up in, well, does that really convey who the character is when it's something that's supposed to be pedestrian? And it's like, just calm down name them something that sounds nice. And, when it comes to other regions of the world in real life, it's like, okay, why, why are we going there? What, what do we need? What is the purpose of introducing an international element? And then, you know, how much research do I need to do so that it's an actual representation of that person's background and not just, Hey, we're the planeteers. We're from all over the world, but we all act like Americans. But we all have very, uh, Stereotypical accents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can so, think of at least two Sonic characters that have that issue. 
uh, and then stuff with like the Crusaders books, a lot of that was kind of handed to me. I had some input here and there, but it was very much a group effort. So I wouldn't really say I made a lot of decisions solely on my own there. A lot of that was baked in with the characters originally. So to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. So in a larger concept, it's a question of what do you want these characters to do? Who do you want them to be? And then extrapolate from there. Right. Here's a question from Axis. In Sonic IDW30, at the end of the Metal Virus Saga, Sonic tries ditching the warp topaz into the sun, but ends up in the soul dimension instead. At first, I thought this was because Sonic mispronounced the word sun, but then I realized Starline opened the portals with the warp topaz using his mind and not his voice, making it impossible for anyone to mispronounce the place they wanted to travel to. So I was thinking, is it possible that Sonic actually wanted to be in the soul dimension and unconsciously warped there? Maybe because Sonic was thinking about Blaze during the climax of the Metal Virus Saga? After all, he warped really close to Blaze's location, even though he's never visited her castle before. Not to mention in issue 32, after recovering his memory, Sonic says he misses Blaze twice in the same issue. Well, he wasn't trying to ditch the warp Topaz in the sun, he was ditching the Metal Virus there. The warp Topaz itself was overloading because of the chaos energy in it. It couldn't handle that much juice. The fact that Sonic wound up in the Soul Dimension is possibly just happy circumstance, or it's some kind of connection between the Chaos Emeralds and Soul Emeralds. That's meant to be intentionally vague. Next question is from Batman 69 Lol Forever. He's uh, coming up in the world, I guess. We didn't so have Batman 69 Lol Returns. We, did, we, we Yeah, we missed that one. And then we'll have the Dark Knight 69 Lol eventually at some point. The annual got me hankering for a Sonic team-up book featuring unusual teams in the style of Sonic Universe, where each team gets a four-issue arc. Who can I ask for this, and how should I ask it, and what teams would you both like to see? Send that kind of stuff over to IDW uh, via their fan mail or social media, and just say, you know, I loved the gimmick of the 2022 annual. I want to see more content like this. Gimme, 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 please. Respectfully, of course, but... They would, you know, showing that you have an interest for that and that there's a demand for it prompts them to, you know, capitalize on it. Oh, people want this product. Let us produce said product. Uh, as for what I would like to see, uh, I think 2023 is going to scratch that itch pretty well. Hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Hmm. Who would I like to see team up? I think we've answered this question a couple times before, but, uh, I mean, if, if Team Dark seemed like the obvious one, and we've seen it before, but, you know, it would be nice to have them actually come back and, you know, actually work together and actually be friends or at least business partners or something. I don't know. Uh, hmm, as far as, like, weird team-ups, I don't know. <laughs> what did I say last time? Let's go with that. I don't remember. Go look it up. It's probably on the master list somewhere. You'll find it. Here's a question from Caleb. How do either of you think a fight between Ash Williams and the Doom Slayer would go down? Well, no matter what, it would absolutely be groovy. <laughs> <laughs> would be fantastic. But uh, I don't know. Whoever wins in that one, I think the planet they were fighting on would lose. I mean... <laughs> I'm not like super up to date on either Ash or Doomslayer, but I doesn't Doomslayer have an arsenal that should turn Ash into giblets very quickly, or is Ash just that tenacious of a hero? I think Ash is protagonist. just I think Ash is just very tenacious. I think that's both yeah, it's both. It's both. It's hard to nail down who would be a winner in this kind of face off because man, Ash Ash's willpower is just completely, like, outrageous. But Doom Slayer's <laughs> murdering ability is impeccable, second to none. I and... mean, ultimately, <laughs> the real answer is they fight for a bit just to, you know, have get that out of the way. But oh. then they realize that they're both against the powers of darkness. Ash puts a <laughs> BFG on his chainsaw arm, and they proceed to clear out the entirety of hell. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You make a good point, sir. You make an excellent point. I mean, you want to hear Ash scream, rip, and tear. 
you want to hear the Doomslayer growl out groovy. You know you want this deep in your soul. <laughs> I want to. I want it. I want it. Uh, Doomslayer makes one. He says one word, and that's it. That's the only word. That's all he needs to say. I mean, that's that's the setup for you, is, you know. Ash puts the BFG onto his arm, shows yep. it off, and Doomslayer just nods appreciatively. Yes. Groovy. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Chaos Sonic 1 has a question. Did you manage to get back to Sega on what the planet is called? Earth. That's it? It's just Earth? It's Earth. All right. Kind of boring, but whatever. Why is Earth got, like, lost hex and little planet over it? What's going on here? Because it's fantasy Earth. Why does Dragon Ball's Earth have furries running around? Actually, I know there is an answer to that, but shut up. <laughs> Why does Sonic's Earth have furries running around, <laughs> for that matter? <laughs> yeah. Why does Clark Kent's Earth have, like, every crazy metahuman and alien popping up on it? Why does the MCU Earth have mutants? Why does fantasy Earth have thing? It's because. Because? Fine. Fine. Whatever. Cosmic Cooking Under 77 has a question. Hey, Ian, what if Sega asks you to make a game with Amy as the lead? What characters from all Fleetway, Archie, manga, cartoon, and comic would you use along with new characters? Like maybe a new female villain that rivals Eggman? Let's, as fun as it is to speculate, let's be real here. Sega's not going to give me full range to produce a game. I have had no experience producing, directing, or coding a game in the slightest. It would be neat to be lead scenario writer. That would be fun. But there is no way, at this juncture at least, I would be given that kind of executive power. As much fun as it would be, but uh, that's not, no, no, no. That said, what would you do if you were? I had this crazy notion of basically taking a pass at Baton Kaito's Origins, which was a RPG with a limited three character roster, but that allowed you to focus on a much more concise story. Mm -hmm. And the battle system was you were dealt cards and the best way that you uh, manage them by numerical or by suit or what have you, if you could chain them properly, you could do some pretty sick combos and if you hit a certain threshold, the you get a special mode where the deck would hand you cards that you needed more likely, and you could do some crazy stuff with that. So I just imagine something like that with Amy Cream in general and using the Fortune deck at a Sonic Origins and uh, the Trial by Fire arc as the cards and have them go on a merry little RPG adventure with the cards as the battle system. Is it entirely original? No, not in the slightest, but I don't know. I see that working. I can see that being kind of fun. I would like that a character driven RPG with a concise cast using in universe assets. And I don't know. I like that idea. As long as it's not the cards from Sonic shuffle, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> And we got one last question before we take a break, and it's from Dove. The Chaotix, everyone from Mighty and Ray to Knuckles, Bomb and Heavy, and everyone else, go out for a night. The place they go has bowling, mini golf, darts, and pool. Who's good at what? Well, if you're casting that broad of a net, technically Fang is a Chaotix, if we're going to look at Sonic the Comic, which is an interesting bit of criteria. Hmm. Uh... I can imagine him being a pretty effective pool shark. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. That, that mental image sticks with me. I mean, he is a sniper. <laughs> yeah. I imagine Mighty and Ray want to take it chill on mini golf, but Mighty has a real hard time with the putter. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's trying to show restraint, but it acts like a wedge every time. <laughs> uh, Knuckles gets ejected the first time he hits the, you know, test your strength punching bag arcade machine and breaks it. <laughs> Or hits a golf ball too hard at mini golf and flings it out <laughs> of the uh, of the area and into someone's head or through someone's the chaotics, windshield. <laughs> the core chaotics are trying their best to play a nice, calm game of bowling, except between Charmy and Bomb, things that are not bowling balls are going down the lanes and causing trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope Ray doesn't accidentally fling himself down the 
cutter. <laughs> who is uh who's this, who's got darts? Did we did you go over that? No, nah, but I imagine Fang is right there too, showing off. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Well, that's it. We are going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back with more Bumblecast. <laughs> Something a little different this week. We have an ad from a patron this time. This one coming from Daniel H. Daniel says, I'd like you to meet Jordan. She's an aspiring filmmaker and cool lady and needed some help. She needs to raise some money for her HRT prescriptions and to move to a more friendly environment. If you could take a moment to visit her GoFundMe page, we'll have a link down in the description, and give the talented artist a helping hand, it would be much appreciated. Thank you for your time and take care. And thank you, Daniel, for your ad. We're back, and we got a question from Endabend. If we ever saw the classic Chaotix in any of IDW's classic Sonic comics, not sure how feasible that is, but I adore Vector's classic string bean design and would love to see it again, what would their personalities be like? Would they be retconned to be closer to their modern selves? Would they even be a team? I... This is speculation on my part. Do not take this as insider info or word of God. This is just me speculating. But I would think that because Knuckles Chaotix is such an obscure game overall, and that the modern characters have cemented themselves so well within the greater consciousness, that if we were to see the classic Chaotix again, they'd probably be retconned to fit the modern standard. Yeah, that makes sense. But would they be a group? Like, would it have Mighty and Ray, or at least Mighty? Would they have Mighty? Would I don't know. I kind of get the feeling that Mighty is now a kind of Mighty and Ray duo thing. Mm. Well, but mate. that's going off of Mania. I could be wrong. I don't know what the long term plans are. Well, then put Ray on the Chaotix too. Why not? Mm. Maybe. Mm. Here's one from Phi. I've been thinking about how Ian said that Big Oof got a way bigger reaction than he expected. So I was wondering if there were any other story moments or lines that got a huge reaction out of the audience in a way you weren't expecting, Sonic or otherwise. <laughs> I do know that when Antoine made his big sacrifice, we knew folks would be upset. That was the point. But we weren't expecting the level of upset that we got. And that's why we kind of backed off a little bit on that plot point. Um, so kudos to you guys for showing Antoine love. I'm sure there is stuff in the past, but nothing immediately springs to mind. I'm sure somebody's going to reference, well, you know, this didn't this go over like a lead balloon? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that happened. And <laughs> you may, maybe you just, maybe the trauma is you, you've just put it out of <laughs> your, you put it out of your mind because you don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> I mean, at the same time, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've written hundreds of Sonic stories alone. Mm -hmm. Never mind everything else. I can't keep up with that and all the social interactions over the years. Mm -hmm. The old Bumble King knowledge bank has a very limited space. Yes. Here's a question from Fang. I don't know how well you know the series, but how would you go about a Ninjago and Sonic IDW crossover? Would you have Tommy Andresen, co-creator of Ninjago, help with the writing? I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry. Uh, and which ninja would you have be the main focus of the series, if you know them? I unfortunately know nothing about Ninjago. Um, who would be involved, I imagine, would be that's a Lego series, isn't it? Yeah. But what's funny is I didn't know that for the longest time. I did not realize it was a Lego thing at all. <laughs> I mean, I guess it would be up to whatever deal IDW, Sega, and Lego uh, hash out. But I would certainly not be opposed to somebody who knows what they're doing being involved in such a crossover. <laughs> Please contribute. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know much of anything about Ninjago either. I mean, it looks cool. But uh, I, I, it's past my time when it comes to uh, Lego. When I had Lego, they were just little blocks. That's it. Yeah. In my <laughs> day, you made cars and houses. 
In my day, they weren't. In my day, they weren't licensed out the wazoo. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Do you know how bad I wanted Star Wars Lego? They were just generic back in the day. Yeah, they were just generic. But man, Star Wars Lego now—that's freaking awesome. But yeah, obviously, we didn't have anything like that. <sighs> oh well. Because today they get all the good toys. Yeah, they do. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's because we all grew up and said, damn it, I want these toys, and we make them. Yeah, that must be what it is. That's probably what it We're is. We're making them for our kids. Yeah. That's uh, the ticket. Uh-huh. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Here's a question from Vitus Cacophony. Okay, Bumble Bros. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, we all know it, and we all love it. So, if some primal tribal force were to conquer the IDW Sonic world, more importantly, who'd fill the role of the mind-controlled allies turned enemies, and how would you change their look to connote, connote this? Hmm. Well, the fun of that is usually having the central protagonist be unaffected and having to deal with his friends. So, we, we'd be seeing a lot of primalized versions of the core cast, I suppose. Amy with some kind of makeshift stone hammer, perhaps. Uh, Tails building inventions out of coconuts a la Gilligan's Island. Knuckles hasn't changed at all. He he wonders why Sonic is giving him a funny look. Likewise, Styx. She's I was, unaffected. I was just about to say, Styx and Sonic are probably like the main characters and everyone else is <laughs> changed in some way. I guess you could throw Knuckles in that with that, too. It's the same joke, but I mean, it fits. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. And how would the Babylon rogues even work? Would they be going around on very giant skateboards? <laughs> I don't know, man. That That's kind of silly. Vector is just that giant crocodile out of Sonic Heroes. <laughs> I was going to say Vector is just giant. Yes, he's just, he just becomes huge and... It's the things. exact same asset. It's just he's wearing headphones. Yeah, <laughs> which he doesn't even do now, does he? Like modern vector, does he wear headphones? That's just classic, sure isn't it? Does he? Yeah, uh, they're different styles. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he's got the headphones. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, You're thinking I, I of think boom I'm... vector. He doesn't have the headphones on. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm being called a fake Sonic fan by the chat. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. Would like the Badniks be like actual little animals? Like would Motobug be a beetle? Would Buzz Bomber actually be some kind of giant hornet? Or would they be like yeah, sure. hobbled together with wood and Eggman is just the most talented wood carver in the world? Well, uh, I mean, yeah. Why wouldn't he be stuffing little animals into hamster wheels inside of his wooden badniks <laughs> inside of, yes, inside of his wooden and stone contraptions. Yes. I mean, this sounds perfect. I don't see a problem with this. It makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> Here's a question from the flower garden. I recognize that this may be a question better directed at Daniel Barnes, but I figured you might have some insight here. Nonetheless, Mechasonic Mark II is slated to appear in Scrapnik Island, but up until now, I would have assumed that he would have been a classic continuity-exclusive character. So what's the deal there? Are robots like him treated a bit differently in regards to the classic-slash-modern split, or is it something else? You know what? I am right there with you. That's what I would have assumed. And when I heard that Daniel's story was just straight-up approved, I was, one, super happy for him, and two, incredibly jealous, because back in the day, I would never have been able to get that story to fly. So, just stars aligned. Very happy for Daniel. Really looking forward to Scrap Nick Island. But it's like, where was this latitude when I was coming up? Arr. Um, As for the reasons why, I don't know. I'm feeling like this is kind of deep insider Sega logic stuff that maybe I shouldn't be just trotting out publicly. I don't always get the spider sense tingle on what I should and shouldn't say. Usually I kind of blunder into it, but when I get that feeling, it's like, maybe I shouldn't, I don't know. Let's give it some time. Let's have Scrapnik Island come out. Let's have other stuff develop 
behind the scenes. And then maybe I'll be a little more free to talk about that sort of thing. Yeah, we we don't know yet. So maybe someday we'll figure it out. But right now we just got to wait and see. Because I'm very curious about this too. Like, are the lines starting to blur? Are things changing? Is this an indication of certain futures? Hmm. Hmm. Frost the White Lion has a question. Do Amy and Silver have some kind of super speed in their own way? I know Sega likes to make all the characters slow just to make Sonic the only one fast and downgraded Shadow, Blaze, and most definitely Tails and Knuckles. What are your thoughts if Sonic's friends are faster in their own way or not? I imagine they are faster than your average Mobian. Again, lack of a better term. Like, I'm sure Amy could outpace just about anybody on the street. And going by, you know, her gameplay in the advanced series and in heroes and whatnot she's still very quick and nimble she's just not you know sonic's signature level of ghost fast silver likewise in terms of just you know raw ambulatory power no he's nowhere near as fast but his tk abilities can propel him to sonic like speeds as we have seen in you know some of the boss fights in the rivals games uh, some of, where gameplay ends and canonical lore begins can get fuzzy, but I imagine they're all very impressively quick. It's just Sonic can is quicker. He is just fast in comparison. Has Blaze and Shadow really been downgraded? I don't think so. Not really. No, not that I've heard. They're of, pretty no. much on the level of Sonic, at least real close. I mean, Blaze's speed seemed to be downplayed in 06, but her gameplay style was all over the place in that game anyway. As Uh, was her, her overall. (laughs) (laughs) But like in the rush games, she is as fast as Sonic period. Right. Right. And shadow, it's always the debate of, is it his speed or is it his shoes? Um, But the point is he never takes those off and he can keep pace with Sonic. So eh, let's not worry about the nuances. He's as fast as Sonic. I really don't want him to take those shoes off anyway. Stinky. Here's a question from Hero of Light 13. In Sonic Generations, classic Sonic, Tails, Eggman, and Metal Sonic were clearly pulled from the classic era. But when exactly from the classic era were they pulled? Considering we never see any classic Knuckles or anyone else, I'm tempted to think they came from just after Sonic 2 slash CD, but before 3 and Knuckles. But would it also be way simpler if they were just pulled from post three and knuckles so that it was a fully classic Sonic, which goes right into mania after generations. Well, the thing is it's a time travel game with pockets from across all of time. They don't have to come from one point. And we know exactly where Eggman and metal come from because we have cutscenes. We know that metal's coming from CD and we know Eggman is kidnapped by time eater from the end of Sonic two. As for Sonic and Tails, they're they're familiar enough with each other, so presumably it's after Sonic 2, but that's there's a whole lot of after Sonic 2. And again, it's time travel. They could have been plucked from literally any point in time individually. So you don't need to worry too much about it. Don't think about it too hard. Here's one from the internet person. Can Shadow use Chaos Snap without a Chaos Emerald? That would explain how he's able to teleport so often without one throughout the series, like during the opening of Episode Shadow 06, for example. That's what I'm working under right now. Or rather, that's the assumption I'm working under right now. Uh, We'll see if that gets flagged or corrected in the future. And we got a question from Jamal S. What if you have Team Sonic versus Bowser from Mario Brothers? Who would win? See, my knee-jerk reaction is to say it's the three heroes versus the one villain. Clearly, they're going to win. But then I thought about it. Mm -hmm. Mario is an incredibly powerful individual, clearly. like He's stomping on enemies left, right, and center. But correct me if I'm wrong, traditionally, Mario can't directly affect Bowser, right? Like, he can't jump on Bowser. He has to hit the axe to drop the bridge. He has to shoot fireballs. He has to stomp on little mecha koopas and chuck them at him throw bowser into bombs but off the top of my head mario himself can't really dent bowser can he no he generally has to have some sort of outside thing or some sort of power up like firepower to throw fireballs at him so for the sake of argument assuming that 
Sonic and the crew are comparable to Mario in physical ability, even three on one, they may not be able to take him down in a straight fight. Depends on what version of Bowser we're talking about, though, too. We talking about like, sure, normal, sure. normal Bowser. We talking about Bowser on a go kart here, or are we talking about <laughs> we talking about Bowser's Fury Bowser, or, or, or I'm, I'm, uh, to keep it simple, I'm just thinking Vanilla Bowser or Giga Bowser from Smash. Oh God! <laughs> but uh, maybe three on one, they could eke out a win. But I'm thinking. Given what we know and what we've been shown, Bowser might be able to hold his own, at least into a draw, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Which and is pretty cool. There's been several times where Mario's been just absolutely raked over the coals by Bowser, so he's definitely not always the big hero. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of with you on that one, actually. I mean, barring plot contrivance, because the heroes must always win... <laughs> I, I think I think it would be a real tough battle for him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Nintendo, maybe you should uh, make a game and settle this. A, a Mario <laughs> and Sonic game that's not just the Olympics. And our last question for today's episode comes to us courtesy of Exadel. All right, Ian, gun to your head. You gotta write a 12-issue comic based on one of these three critical and commercial flops. Daikatana, Advent Rising... Or Drake and the 99 Dragons? Which one do you choose and why? <laughs> uh, am I given latitude to just do what I think works for the story? I don't know. At least one of these was supposed to have a comic, or does. I forget yeah. which one. I th- I'm pretty think, sure Drake did. I think it's Drake, yeah. I think it was supposed to have a whole multimedia thing behind yeah. it. yeah. Yeah, I think, um, well, they might have all have were supposed to, but especially Drake. I don't know. I feel like if you have at least an interesting core premise and some well-defined characters, you can find the diamond in just about any rough. I, I will be arrogant enough to say I would tackle any three of them if told to do so. Don't know if I'd actually seek it out, but, you know, here, Ian, we'll pay you all the monies to do one of these all right i'll give it a shot see what i can do with it uh i might live to regret it (laughs) i might spend a great deal of time researching it going oh what have i gotten myself into but i don't know i think you can find a way to spin just about anything to be at least entertaining and if i can't find a legitimate way to tell their stories there's always the lampoon always fall back on the memes if you absolutely have to because <laughs> you just said 12 issues you didn't say they had to be good <laughs> well uh, honestly you know it's weird i feel like advent rising is kind of the odd one out here because it's not that bad like even critically it's not really that bad it 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 seems to have done fairly decently it's just it, there it was just a mess behind the scenes but mm. And it like isn't super great, but I mean, there's something there I think to work with. You could make something work with it. I think with all of these, you could probably make something work with it eventually. But yeah, it's just mm, lots of missed opportunities, of course, as always. But yeah, Advent Rising seems to be out of the uh, a weird one that's out of sync with the rest. Just from what I'm looking at here, it's like this one actually has decent reviews and seems to be viewed at least positively by some people. The other two, not so much. <laughs> so, but uh, either way, we all lose. And with that, a, we're done. I had a good transition. I lost it. Oh, no. Oh, well. Now, that's going to wrap us up for this episode of the Bumblecast. But before we go, we need to give a big thank you to all the patrons over at patreon.com slash Bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash Bumblecast, and our YouTube members who make this show possible. Big thank you to Daniel H., Alex P., James K., John B., Jennifer R., Robot and Combs, Samuel P., Sam Cybercat, Torchbound Mike B., Dave M., Coupling Crew 128, Do As Diz Din, Jay Frost, Salute Your Cat, Andrew D., Hero of Light 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Ryan D., Chris A., Sonny, John M., Noni, Jib, Don B., Yami M., Lee A., HK, Lisa M, Fiona M, Chevelle, 
Invade Turbo Tunas, Sonic, 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 Ben W, Blue Title Gamer, Keeper of Monsters, Tick Tick, Axis, Xanderoni the Painter, Final Neil, Scurvy Pirate Hog, Jonathan Ink Pants is missing his actual pants. The name is X, Justin S. Solaristain, Nimmer, Godzilla, Daddler the Dalek, Chaos Universe, Sonic Legacy, Daniel B, Ava Arctic, Pedanti Cat, Dove, Red the Supernamic, Arc Fighter, Quaggle Gaggle, Chad, Nondal, Professor Rye, Jack the Animator, Cameron H, Les, Jennifer H, Sapphire Scarletta, Alphamon or Yukon, Joshua S, Omega Watt, Preston M, Sonic 84, Noah S, Finest Cacophony, Alex G S, Cordero Highwind, Supersonic Fan, Awesome Cakester, Radry, Dapper Shinks, Just a Mountain Soul, Callum Q, Red Wolf, Ty H, Starlight Sec, and Tails, Matty H, KJB, John the Real Waluigi, Derusival, In Zephyr, Cosmic Cooking Hunter 77, Mox, The Marble Gardener, Owen BD, Lemur Chicken, Wild 48, T Ranger, Twilord, Ryle 74, King Toasty, Miles the Prower, Navari, Exodel, Agent Kaz, Four Sonic Fan, Lewis J, Michael P, Rhythm Raccoon, The Disagayan, Fitness Asker, Pap, Delta God 77, Miggy Sawdust, Pig Dan 20, Ty Cyan, Jamal S, Curly Quills, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Josiah H, Angela V, Lacey M, Unlikely Veronica, Fang the Werehog, Caleb, Phi, Nova Poly Duo, Timon B, Thebius, Smiley 21, The Flower Garden, Sammy S, Give Up Your Children, Separate, Bowser Studios, Tetsu Knight, Sterling Sonic, Crowbo, Sonic Mania 2099, Thigoff, Hadronis, Nils, Chaos Sonic 1, Sky the Desu, Supernova, In the Bend, Superior Pizza, Charlie B, Chaos Shadow, Sonic Padge, The Internet Person, The Shadow Emperor, Shining Nova, Zek Cartoonist, Butter Noodles, Frost the White Lion, Danny the Light, Ryoko Shion, Meta Mode, Wheels 282 Hedgehog. Wow. Just incredible. Beautiful. I can't believe there's so many people in that list. Holy crap. And it's ever growing. Absolutely. Thank you. We will see you Wednesday for another Priority Q&A episode and Friday for the standard Q&A. Until then, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Take care. It's over. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at BumbleKing.com and KNGI.org. What the hell was going on with Mosin Wrath, you know? <laughs> Here's the cool, badass, evil version of Aladdin with a skeletal arm and his weird magic eating fish lizard. All right, that guy. Okay, I had to look him up. <laughs> like, I don't remember. Yeah, were they supposed to be his long lost brother? It's the main antagonist. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking it was. Let's see. Oh, uh, okay. Third movie was watchable. Not amazing, but, you know, decent. Let's see, it says, Rumor has it that the writers were planning on revealing that he and Aladdin were brothers in the third movie before the focus was shifted to Aladdin's father. Hmm. Hmm. And they did, a cross- kept- they did a crossover with Hercules, yes. I do remember that one. Let's see, that's another delightful episode. Also, the Hercules show wasn't too bad. I never saw it. It's all right. I also, I'm also a fan of the movie, though. I like Hercules the movie. Like I know a lot of people... I think at the time, a lot of people were down on it, but eh. I'll let you have that one. You can enjoy it as much as you like. I mean, it's got problems. Everything does, but there's stuff to enjoy in there. You're telling me you don't like the, uh, <clears throat> you don't like Hades? Hades was fun. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. And they did find an elegant enough way to do herc's origin story while not actually doing the authentic one well you why know? were you expecting it to be authentic i no, it, i know it's disney but it's not like aladdin kyle, is authentic to <laughs> thousand and one arabian nights kyle yeah the central conceit of herc losing his powers was that he can't become a god until he embraces what a true hero is okay and he goes in to fight the Cyclops with zero powers, knowing it's a suicide mission to protect the people of Greece. That didn't turn him into a god. Jumping into the river Styx to selfishly save his girlfriend was what turned him into a god. 
that pisses me off. <laughs> okay. No end. That sucks. I'll give you that one. <laughs> that does suck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sucks. I don't. Yeah. I'm with you. But Although I mean, it does have one of the. It does have a gag that sticks to me this very day, where the Titans are released from Tartarus. And they're all dramatically attacking the landscape and they're marching off to the horizon. Kill Zeus. Kill Zeus. And he goes, hey, guys, Olympus is that way. And there's just this beat of them <laughs> staring dumbly. And then they turn around. Kill Zeus. Kill Zeus. <laughs> that is, yes. Yes. Uh, Hades is delightful. I do love him. On top of that. When Herc goes to save Meg, yeah. he has this extended moment where it's clear that he's setting up Hades for the fall. He knows that he's scamming the system by sacrificing himself to save Meg. That is not heroic. Yeah. That is. <sighs> yeah. 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 That and turning the muses into a Catholic choir analog. <laughs> uh, no. Their no, songs no, were no, great, no. though. <laughs> forgettable but oh come on you telling me you don't remember zero to hero oh my god that was nails on a chalkboard oh no ian no <laughs> like the, oh, own, no. the only redeemable song <laughs> is michael bolton's version of <laughs> i can go the distance and that's just because it's like generic schmaltzy we, I think we have found the thing we disagree on like oh <laughs> wow <laughs> holy crap and even the chat is like what <laughs> like Hercules <laughs> in terms of Disney movies is the one I don't want to watch again it was that bad <sighs> wow there's so much hate in your heart for this delightful <laughs> little movie because it's trash <laughs> and not even fun trash. What? <sighs> what do you think about uh, what, what? What are your thoughts on uh, on the Emperor's new groove? Oh, that's brilliant. That's the peak okay. Animation. Okay, good. Okay, good. At least we're in agreement on that. <laughs> that's the funniest damn movie to ever come out of something that wasn't Mel Blanc. Yes, the movie is genius. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm the glad we at least found that. Start to finish. Oh yeah. No. 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 <laughs> okay. Like Emperor's New Groove is spectacular. It is dare I dare I say flawless. Yes, very nearly flawless. It is genius, absolutely genius. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, no contest there. But I mean, it's very much. I feel like Hercules and it are in similar veins. Like I don't know, maybe it's just because of the era of Disney. They were like similar era, but. See, I feel like Hercules is the soulless pretender trying to be as witty and stylish as Emperor's New Groove. I get that. I get it. Ah, it's just, I and don't know. It is It is a bit of bias on my side because of the liberties they take with Greek mythology. Yeah. I, I, I will admit that bias on my end, freely, but I'm, I'm not going to, you know, if you enjoy it, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you can get joy where I cannot. <laughs> so have my share of the rewatch. I mean, I definitely don't disagree with your criticism of the uh, of the ending of what actually made Herc into a god. That's very silly, hmm. but Roger Rabbit is fantastic. <sighs> Roger Rabbit is brilliant. Roger Rabbit is genius. Yes, like, like yes. never mind the story, the technical level, uh huh, and the amount of effort. I mean, sure, there's a little bit of jank to be had, but I went back and watched it not too long ago. Me too. And it holds up so well, even on a technical level. Mm -hmm. Like They put a lot of effort uh, into making sure it looked really good, and it shows, even today. Atlantis Lost Empire breaks my heart, because it could have been so much more. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, gorgeous design, what could have been an interesting cast of characters. I know it was basically series bait. They were setting up the animated series, but the core story itself was just kind of there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of forgettable, really. I, I'm, yeah, I barely remember it. <laughs> I know I've seen it, but I don't, I don't really remember it. So, hmm. well, 
I don't know. You, Noni, you say the Gargoyles and Atlantis crossover. What I would have loved to have seen was the idea that Wiseman trotted out there of a Gargoyles gummy bears crossover, which is what I should have mentioned in the mini. Damn it. But like <laughs> gummy bears, freaking rules. Yeah. It's <laughs> a little childish. Sure. It's a kid's cartoon, but the lore that it does have is fascinating and it wouldn't take much to dial it up just a bit to fit more with gargoyles. And that would have been fucking amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been fun. Bouncing here and there and everywhere. I'm glad they at least brought, were able to bring something back from 2017 or for DuckTales 2017. Yeah, I appreciated that. that call out. Yeah, that was great. But I would have liked to have seen it be a full on crossover. That is, you know what, Chaos Sonic 1? That makes sense. I can see that. <laughs> God, yes, that would be great. All right. Street Search was garbage, but the toys were fantastic. <laughs> what, like Biker Mice from Mars? Yeah. Dude, like, my dad actually knew somebody involved with Biker Mice from Mars. I don't know if he was a showrunner or if he was <laughs> part of the marketing or what, but I distinctly remember they invited him over for dinner one night because he wanted to, you know, kind of test drive the concept by me, a kid that was in the demographic they were aiming for. Really? Wow. Okay. Like he was like, he, he basically gave me the elevator pitch. Hmm. It was like, it's like Ninja Turtles, but they live in a scoreboard and instead of pizza, they, they drink a beer. And my immediate reaction was that sounds stupid as hell. <laughs> and he was getting, I remember him being really frustrated that I just was not picking up what he was putting down. Yeah. Yeah. And then the show came out. I don't know how much later I'm like, this seems vaguely familiar. And sure enough, I had like a little lapel pin with the logo on it. Wow. <laughs> so did, uh, did you still hate it? <laughs> I, I didn't watch enough of it to really form an opinion. I didn't like the art style. Yeah. yeah. I didn't like it's... the, what I got of the, the mice themselves. They just seemed like swaggering assholes it's a it's just another kind of ninja turtles-esque clone that were all the rage then you know like wild west cowboys of moo mesa yeah, yeah things yeah. like that and kind of kind of forgettable i mean maybe nostalgic but kind of nostalgic but also kind of hair and great. sanitize it to hell yeah pretty much it's like yeah it's all right but uh, I mean, yeah, the, no, the I, I will say that the Biker Mice from Mars SNES game soundtrack, freaking amazing, <laughs> freaking <laughs> rad. I don't know. What, I don't know who did it, but it is like a freaking it is metal as hell. <laughs> Big Dan, I've not I never met Stan Lee, but Aaliyah was almost uh, stomped on by his entourage. <laughs> we were at a show and like the security gang that surrounded him just about like toppled her over she came back to the table just furious wow like i know it's a busy convention floor but you know have some consideration hmm well that's mean okay <laughs> now i figured out why the biker mice from mars soundtrack is so freaking good it's konami of course of course it's konami Ah, man like they were on, on their a game in the 8 and 16 bit era as far as music goes so, yes, that makes sense. God, such a good soundtrack. The game is all right, too. It's an isometric top-down racing game, so it's it's all right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, uh, rock and roll racing. Actually, it's a lot like rock and roll racing. I'm wondering if uh, the concept was... Uh, someone lifted the concept from the other. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming... We're just going to swap these sprites and ship. Well, no, not quite. It's not quite that, but... We, uh, somewhat <laughs> amazing soundtrack though all right i need to go run to the grocery store before it gets too late all righty get the, get the heck out of here man i will okay thanks for joining us guys and we will see you saturday for the live stream yep catch you then oh real quick kyle is uh friday's episode 